Listen, Internets, man, I had the rare and great opportunity to sit down with, with Eric B, man. You know, so many gems, man. So many gems. Like, for somebody that you don't hear speak a lot, Eric spoke, man. And I, and I really appreciate it. Did you enjoy yourself? We'll have a great time. We'll yeah. do it again. Definitely, man. Definitely. Internets, don't miss this episode. Eric B, president. My brother. Yes, sir. Say that you were like a, a nerd? No, no. See, now, see now, now that's where I'm leaving now. Oh, no, no, don't leave. I'm not, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm just trying to... <laughs> no, no, I'm, just... I'm just playing with you. Right. Man. No, but I understand. Of course. Right. Of course. Nobody else was doing that. Nobody else was thinking about doing that. A black kid, you know, taking transistor radios apart and stuff like that. You know, we're thinking about being in the park playing right. basketball. Right. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's what I did. I took them apart, you know. Step by step, I took the transistors, learned how to take the screwdriver and turned it up and made it louder. I remember my mother came home and was like, my radio sounds beautiful. This is <laughs> I was like, Phew. Yeah, I mean, it was a great, it was, it was a great, like you said, I guess that was my transition, right. you know, into being a DJ, learning the electronics first. Right. And then, you know, being, being up, Vernon giving me that opportunity to play in the park. And then from there, you know, I, I started DJing. At 127 Park, and you know, in East Elmhurst, Queens. What was your initial DJ name? Eric B. So you never, you never had like a. Cool... But, it, but it was Eric B E E. Oh, Eric. And then B. when you know, then when I got cooler, <laughs> right. you know, you had to take the two E's off. Right. You know, that right. ain't sexy. You know? Right. So how did you go from 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 being a, a local DJ to DJing with WBLF? Um. Just went up there. Went up there and applied. They had. They were talking about, you know, we wasn't, we weren't DJs. First, they were giving out, they were giving out shirts and hats and this and that. I was actually on the first street team. They put together a street team. We had these these purple jackets that were orange letters that said WBLS right. on them. So I was big time back. Oh, then. what I, I was the man. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got a WBLS, BLS jacket. Yeah, that's big, I'm man. walking around. Frankie Crocker's here in the building. You know, what I'm saying, Mister, I'm the man. Frankie Crocker. Hey, he was. Frankie, what's happening? You know, I'm saying. When I, we came up, man, we came up in a great era. Right. I mean, Frankie Crocker was around. Uh, he was he was dating Willie Mays' daughter at the time. Okay. Uh, Tom Seaver lived in the neighborhood. Wow. Um, and, and if you go back in history, if you see the house that Malcolm X was in and they blew the house up, right. that's two two blocks away from me. Oh, that's great. So there's a lot of history. Of course. In my neighborhood, Louis Armstrong lived there. Like I said, Tom so Seaver. So this is real a, middle a, class. A, yes, yes. This is real middle class, man. Yeah. When did you decide that you wanted to start making music? Um, being, being a DJ and then hearing Rapper's Delight and you're hearing all these other songs and then you're saying, yo, I think I could do that. Right. I think I could do that. Ne I never forget, I said, man, I know I could do it. And then I had, a, I, had a, I had a this great idea. I said, you know what? I go from Queens, Brooklyn, you know, Staten Island, you know, every weekend or during the week. Right. I said, you with, know with what? With the street team? Yes. Right. So I had a BLS van, didn't have a driver's license, but I had a BLS okay. van. We're going to tell that story. Right. Nobody's so, listening. Of course not. So, you know, I was going from uh, city to city, and I said, man, I'm going to go get all the rappers that I find. Like, you know, I'd find somebody rapping in the Bronx, find somebody in Queens, find somebody. And I said, I'm going to put together an album with some of the greatest rappers, in, you know, in the tri-state area. Right. Like a compilation Of album. course. Right. But then wind up going on Long Island, and I just wine dance just kept every weekend they would call. Oh, we want Eric to come back. We were so I'd play because you rocked literally, it. You, you, yeah, you, literally right. every week I would play another street in wine dance. Right. It, was, it was the most ridiculous thing in the world. So every every week I'd be on this street, that street, every weekend in, in wine dance. So I, I met a, a guy named Alvin Tony mm -hmm. when I was there, and Alvin Tony told me, Eric, you know, we got rappers out here, rappers and what. Man, I this, forgot is, this, shit, this is man. Long Island. I mean, yeah. no, are you serious, man? There's no rap in Long Island. No, 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 no. no. Alvin, cut the shit. No, he said, "No, nah, Eric, I'm telling you, these guys are nice. I got this, get, got this nine, Freddie, man, Freddie Krueger, man. He's the man. And we gonna go over there. So we went over to Fox's house first. Freddie, Freddie Fox. Yes, right. we went over to Fox's house first, and he was so Eric, man. He's the man. He's the man. I'm telling you, he's the man. Then we went over to Rakim's house, and right. me and him just start talking. You know, he was home. We start talking and going, you know, back and forth. You know about different things. I'll never forget, you know, when we when I went there, uh, they used to call him Pop. Right. So up on the wall, he had wrote Rakim on the wall. I'll never forget this. In this room, he used to write stuff on, on the wall and wrote Rakim. I was like, yo. He was like, yo, I'm studying, you know, 
I'm, I'm a five percent. I'm studying. I'm studying and my lessons, right? Okay. You know, then that's you know that's then that's the name we went with. Right. Every V and Rakim. Yes. Because the DJ always came first. No, 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 no. Actually, Rakim made up the name of the group. Really? Yes. But but if you remember though, the DJ back then was yes. so much more revered, and yes. their name like Jazzy Jeff. Yes. And the Fresh Prince. Now going back to Fox, right? Freddie mm -hmm. Fox. Yeah. You went to his crib. He wasn't there. Yes. We got Fox in the studio. Fox, man. What up? To the Combat Jack show. What up, bro? Where were you, man? What happened that day? Did you know they were coming over? Or? Yeah, I remember. Um, we were. I was driving, and uh, they stopped me in the street, and and I was like, "Yo, this is Eric." Eric had on yes. a, a, a fur coat, or was it a fur? Was it, what, fox. it was a fox coat. Fox. Damn, with, we remember. With, with, a, with a leather with a leather hat on, right? And, and and a big gold chain on his neck, and I was like, "What up, man?" And he was like, "Yo," he said, "This is Eric B. He's doing a, um, a project, and you know." He wanted to know if you would rock on it. And I said, well, I got to go to a rehearsal with my group. And I said, you know, we you know, we would definitely be interested. He said, nah, not we, you. Right. And I, what was bad about it is I promised my dudes, man, that I was going to do a song with them. So that's the reason why I wasn't there. Right. Because I, I wanted to keep my obligation to my crew. So it wasn't that I didn't show up because I was irresponsible. I just wanted to keep my obligation to You being to a my, loyal dude. I was being loyal to my team. Right. And and then he went and then he met Rakim after that. And then the know? rest is history. The rest is yes. history. Which is what it was supposed to be. So, so I mean, you know, these are the touchstone questions. Things that set history into motion, man. How did y'all come up with the record Eric B for president? Well, um, Rakim had already had my melody. My melody probably was, we had those um, tapes. I think it was probably about... 30 to 45 minutes long. It's right. just this long rap that he had put together. 30, 40 minutes. Yes. Just It just, just wouldn't stop. Right. It, it, we had to actually cut it off because it was so long. My melody, like he could rap all week. So that's the, that's the first, he had that track. Yeah. No, he had the actual, he had the actual, um, the rhymes. Right. My melody. And right. it was just on a tape and it just went on and on and on. So we went, it's, it's so funny that I, I look at on the internet and I see Molly Maul right. doing this whole tutorial talking about how he made the record. He he is totally right that he was the engineer yes. and then made the record. And I and I say, this is so funny. When I got the records, Rakim's brother Stevie Blast worked in a pirate record plant. Like they were had some Jewish guys. They had a a, a record plant and they were backdooring records, pressing records. So I had the two records. I'll never forget. I'm in Rakim's basement and it's me, Rakim, Stevie Blast, and they're drinking Valentine Ale. I can remember like it was yesterday. So I told Rakim, I said, what I was going to do. I said, this is the beat I'm going to use, the president, uh, James Brown, the president. And th then I'm going to take a bass line and put it on top of it. Rakim spit the beer all over his mother's basement, laughing. Thought it I said, I'm going to take something like Vonda Ray. I'm going right. to do my own interpretation of Vonda Ray over like a fat rat. Right. Which was a big hit the, at the time. He spit the beer all over. And so his brother, Stevie Blast, never forget. And I love Stevie Blast to today. He said, Eric, don't listen to this dude. Don't listen to him. He said, all this dude, is, all he does is write rhymes in right, a book. Right. He said, Eric, I, I'm a trained musician. I taught myself. He said, Eric, don't abandon the plan. He said, don't listen to this dude, Eric. He said, I'm telling you. He said, he said, Eric, put it on again. Put it on again. And he's like, Eric, let me come play the keys. Let me do this. Let me do that. And I never forget, Stevie Blast told me, he said, Eric, please do not abandon the plan. Don't right. listen to this dude. Right. And, what and then the, I told what, what Rock the, What was the plan? The plan was to do Eric B as president, right. put um, the baseline okay, yeah, yeah, on top yeah, 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 of it, yeah, okay. and then then uh, um, we we were laughing. And I remember telling Rock Kim, "This is how paid in full came." And I said, "I said, all right, Rock. I said, I want you to laugh like that when you get paid in full." And and that's how the album name came, paid right. in full. And we used to laugh all the time. He said, "All right, we're gonna see what happens." And then I remember taking the records. Let me tell you, my greatest mentor in this business was Dougie Fresh. Yes. Dougie Fresh was on fire. Damn, you, it's, it's like you read my questions. Lottie Dottie in the show. Right. So what happened was I remember taking the records to Dougie Fresh, and Dougie Fresh used to sit there and go, "I don't know, Hops. We gonna see what happened, Hops, and see how you put this together." You know, how Doug talked with the raspy right, voice. Right, right, right. I don't know, Hops. <laughs> I don't know if you are gonna pull this one off, Hops. We gonna see what happened. So I went to Molly's house because he was the engineer. Right. Like Mr. Magic used to call him the engineer all-star right. because he was the engineer. Right. So I paid Molly to do, um, because I didn't know how to you know, work the, the equipment, but I had the ideas and I knew exactly what I wanted done. So I gave him the records. I said, this is what I want done. That's what I want done. He was like, yo, this is which a is, great idea. Which is production. That's your producing, <coughs> your orchestrating, yes. the creation of these musical of, pieces. Of course, but you know, it's so funny 
these guys tell these stories because I don't do interviews. Right. And it's so important, you know, now to, to <coughs> tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? If you want to leave me out of history, that's that's fine with me because I didn't get into this business to be a star. I got right. in this business to get out of the street. Right. And a lot of people say, well, Eric, why you don't do interviews? I said, because it don't matter to me. But when people tell lies, right. and, you know, and perpetuate these lies and, oh, I did this, I did that, then I they, did this. Those lies become facts. Exactly. Right. So people are so, oh, well, Marley did this. Come on. Marley has no no publishing no, no, nothing on the record. So you want me to tell me that that Marlon just gave me the record mm. and he was scared of me? So that's why he get. Come on, man. He know he knows what it is. Um, Eric, Eric 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 Holder. Yes. Eric Holder was my neighbor. Right. Really. Eric Holder lived around the corner. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying from me. So I, you know, he had more black people in this cabinet and appointees. Even the, um, the uh, black guy he run he ran the housing department. I mean, everybody. Look at all his appointees. appointees. And, you know, and when Kanye said he doesn't like black people, I was like, I don't know where he got right, that from. Because he, he, gave he had more appointees in, in his cabinet than any other president. Black people in his cabinet than any other president. That's crazy. One of your biggest personal accomplishments is sitting down and meeting and talking with the late, great Nelson Mandela. Wow. That was the funniest thing ever. How'd that happen? Um, we had a dinner for uh, Mandela when he came home right. um, at, at uh, Robert De Niro's place. Okay. And, and so, probably about 20 of us. And, and the funniest thing in the world was, my father went, went, went with me, and we went down there, and Mandela loves boxing. Mm -hmm. So he got he was, the, a, he was a boxer before. Yeah, so he has the Secret Service with him. He got his own detail with him. So he comes over to the table, my brother, my brothers. So my father gets up, and he's hugging my father, my brothers, my brothers. So he starts talking about Joe Lewis. Mm. And my father, so, so now, Secret Service, they're not trying to be right up on him right. because, we, you know, it's only 20 people in there and they're not trying to, you know, let him breathe. So they're on the perimeter outside. So Mandela gets up in the middle of the thing and him and my father are talking about boxing. So Mandela got his hands up. My father got his hands up. The Secret Service goes, oh, my God, they get ready to fight in wow. the middle of the floor. So the Secret Service runs over there and Mandela goes. So then they come over, the, the assistant comes over, starts whispering, he says, hey, hey. Don't interrupt me when I'm talking to my brothers. <laughs> Don't come over here again. And so him and my father are standing in the middle of the floor and throwing punches. It, it was the most, it, it was the That's weirdest amazing, thing, man. the weirdest that thing I've ever seen. So amazing, and my man. father, never forget, my father, Mandela had a glass and a napkin and stuff like that. And my father said, Mr. Mandela, it's all right if I keep the napkin. My brother, I'll give you anything I got. My brother, it's great to see. They're in there with their hands up and showing each other boxing moves mm. in the middle. I'm like... This this guy and my father never forget. I've never seen my father cry, and tears came out. He said, "Man, wow. Eric, I can't believe this, man. I can't believe I'm here with with Mandela, and I'm sitting here, one of the greatest men of all times." Man, it's it's so beautiful hearing about your relationship with your father, man. Yeah, yeah, and you know what's so funny? Everybody else had a relationship with my father, right. whether it be Flavor Flav, Fox, or anybody else. Everybody else used to, you know, Flavor Flav would come to my father's house about 4 o'clock in the morning, and, and he'd show off his new car. Mr. B, I got a new car, shit, nigga, Flavor Flav, boy. He said, Flav, my neighbors, you're going to wake up my neighbors. You know what I'm saying? And he was like a father to everybody, mm -hmm. everybody in the team. Like, even if we had women that came from out of town to see us, they go hang out with my father before right. they come to see us. Right, right, right. And he'd take them around and, and all that kind of stuff. And he really was a father to the whole team. I think the most fortunate thing, though, about your relationship with your father is that he was very proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. What, without a doubt. i never forget. He was like, you know, I, you know, I bought him the rolls. I gave him the rolls. Royce. He was like, Eric, who, who, who? And I remember him telling me. He's like, who else, who else, their son bought them a Rolls Royce? He said, I ain't got no friends that his son bought them a Rolls mm -hmm. Royce. And he was, he was proud of it. Right. He was, he was very proud of it. Right. You talked about boxing. You, you're involved in boxing. Yes, right I love boxing. Man. You're, you're on the New Jersey Boxing Commission? No, I got a, a, my own boxing belt. Okay. But, you know, it's, um, being in boxing is great. You could do so many different things. Right. Like when I managed Floyd Mayweather, right. uh, mm -hmm. Oliver McCall. Right. Uh, Riddick Bowe. I've done so many different things in boxing that I love it. It's a great one of the greatest sports. And I love it. Um, you have a community center. Yeah. In Newark. Yeah, we do. I did that for years. Right. And okay. is it is it still running? We, you're in open Newark. Okay. 
So I've done that for years. Um, hey, you did your homework. Jim. I mean, I, you know, that's what I do, man. Okay. Um, nominated. Yeah. For the Rock and Roll, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I knew he wasn't gonna gonna win that. Why? Because I remember all the newspapers start talking about Eric B. and Rock Kim should walk in the Ho Rock and Roll Hall of Fame backwards. And the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are really temperamental guys. And mm -hmm. I knew it. I remember, um, uh, what's his name, was on the board, and he wrote everybody on the board letters saying how important it is for us. And I knew it wasn't going to work because I remember uh, other people in there, you know, talking about being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I knew it wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. I knew it. when they, The way they were talking about it, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame will turn their back on you in a minute. Of course, of course. Oh, they're not playing at all. Of course. Oh, you're going to force us to, to put them in? Uh, ain't, ain't no way. What else are you working on these days, man? Everything. Like what? Like everything. You TV? know what? You know what it is? Yeah, TV. But you know what it is? Being retired, you do everything. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, wake I can't, up in the I can't morning. Believe, I can't believe you're sitting here telling me you're retired. Yes, man. I wake up in the morning. I got one of the greatest lives in the world. I wake up in the morning. What am I going to eat? Yo, what kind of time? You I don't have to on? think about anything other yeah. than shit what, like that. What am I going to... What kind of suit am I going to put on today? Did I wear that tired before? Let me go back to the pictures. You know, I got a great life. No man. stress. By the grace, no, of course. No stress. Yeah, it, it's stressful. You know, people try to stress right. you out, but I don't. I don't let them. Man. I'm telling you, when I say I'm at peace with myself, I'm at peace with myself. Whatever happens is going to happen. What do you attribute that to, man? Does, does that go back to your father yes. again? Yes. Yeah. My, uh, my father, my uncles, my mother, all of them had this like monotone, you know, temperament. My grandmother. Oh my God, man. My grandmother. Her face, like everybody asks, well, Eric, where do you get that face from and that look? My grandmother. My grandmother was one of the most God-fearing women you ever met. She'd mm -hmm. read the Bible, you know, for lunch. She'd read the Bible. But if you seen her face, you'd be like, man, I'm going to go stand outside. Man. <laughs> Your grandmother. Right. And, but she was one of the nicest right. women that you ever met. met. Like my grandmother, we'd come off tour and drive to Ruville, Mississippi. The back road, there's only one traffic light in the, in the city. Come through there. We come through there at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. My grandmother would get out of the bed and cook for us. Mm. She was like, no, y'all can't go to bed hungry. You know how them old southern women are. You know, you can't go to bed hungry. And she'd get out the bed and make fresh biscuits and, and cook and cook for us. And if you seen her face, she'd be like, uh, yo, you know, must stand up to Opinions, the mm. greatest MC of all time. Okay. Who are your top five favorite MCs of all time? Um, top five, I think LL. Um. Uh, Uh, it's rough, man. I, I, I really don't have a top five. Mm -hmm. I think LL is un, underrated. Mm -hmm. uh, Melly Mel is definitely, yes. definitely a great inspiration. Melly Mel is deep. My first favorite MC. Deep, man, deep. I, I mean, you know what? I, I find some greatness in everybody, even the new guys, man. I, I love Drake, man. I love Drake the is way, amazing. I love the way he pushed the envelope, and I tell him, I, I told people, I said Drake's best work has not come yet. Yeah, exactly. I said the kid is still getting acclimated into being a star and, and being comfortable. Listen his to his momentum. Record. His momentum is crazy. Man. Yeah. I said Drake could be around for the next 20 years mm. if he chooses to. Wow. But listen to this. He still hasn't went back into acting mode. Mm -hmm. Look, I laughed at the commercial. The commercial, you could see his acting skills mm -hmm. and the commercial that right. he has. I mean, you know, these new guys, I mean, even Lil Wayne, these new guys have pushed it and pushed the envelope. Kanye's, you know, pushed the envelope. You know what I'm saying? Then you still have, you know, you still have the, the other guards around. You have Nas and you have uh, Jay-Z still mm -hmm, around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These guys are still still around and ready to go. It's good to hear you commending the new generation. Because yeah, a lot too. of people from that era don't, man. Because they're hateful. Because they didn't take care of their business. Mm -hmm. They're mad at the new money that these guys are getting. you got to remember, Eric B. and Rakim put themselves in a great position. Eric B. and Rakim go on the road, we get 150, 200 grand a night. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? We put ourselves in a great position, and a lot of people didn't put themselves in that position. And they're hateful. Like I said, I'm in a great space. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm at peace with myself. So I'm you can appreciate mad. everything. I'm not mad at nobody. Right. Yo, mad about what? Right. These new guys getting it? Let them get it. Let it get it. I'm, right. still, I'm still the elder statesman. I'm good. I'm, come on. Who, who picks up a buck fifty, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 a night? You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, I, I laugh. I think it's great. You know, these new guys running around doing it. I remember when we were young doing the same thing. And it's a it's a great, it's a, oh, well, they didn't make records like you guys. It's a different era. They're not it's supposed to. It's a different to. time. They're not supposed to be paying all that money in the studio with all that tape and yes. engineering. It's a different right. time, different day. These guys, you know, what they're doing, 
you know, they're great for this era. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm saying it has to change. The music has to change. Every six months, you know, mm -hmm. you got a new star. Every year you got somebody else that emerges. And it's great. It keeps the art form going. It keeps the music going. You know what I'm saying? Look, we're 30 years later and we're still the hottest music, the hottest genre out mm -hmm. there. We, we're still the most influential. Still driving exactly. pop culture and yeah. culture around the of world. Of course, yes. and it's getting better mm. every day. Mm. We, come on. We're in, club, we're in places like Ibiza and, and places like that. You know what I'm saying? Where, where we're, we come into the club, we're like seeing a dinosaur on 125th Street. Right. Oh, my God. Look at, you know, look at this. So I think that these young guys are great at what they do. And get out the way. Right. You know what I'm saying? I tell people. If you don't get, like them, get out. If you don't like them, you don't right. like them. Get out the way. You right. don't have to like this. Turn it off. Right. Go to go to XM Radio and go to Ed Lover's show. Yeah. And if you want to listen to old school rap, go to listen to Ed Lover. He right. plays a lot for you. Right. And you know, get in your lane. Backspin. Exactly. Right. Get in your lane mm -hmm. and, and and listen to that type right. of stuff. Right. But don't get. You know, I just I'm happy for these guys, and that's what puts me in a great space because I'm not being negative. I'm not. Oh, you know these guys shouldn't be doing this, and they didn't. You we didn't a, have to you curse. Be an elder states. No, man. yeah, you got to be an elder state. You can't be an old school hater, old funky hater, and all that. Me and Fox go old rusty <laughs> hater and all that. You uh, can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who got time for that I silly know, I shit? I don't got no time for that. Man, you should embrace these young boys and and teach them stuff. And and like I tell them, don't fall in the same holes I fell in. Don't have kids out of wedlock. Don't have kids by different women. Don't fall into the same holes that we all fell into right. being stupid. Right. And and that's what you got to do. Be the elder statesman to say, look, man, you know, I'm not trying to be in your business, but you shouldn't do this, 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 mm -hmm. this and that. And they respect that. Right. I'm not coming at them. Yo, you know, in my day, I was doing this and that. Come on, man. In my day, you know what I'm saying? The people that that's with me are grandparents. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm happy with that. Right. You know, I'm happy with that. And, and where I am in my life, they talk about, oh, you guys are old. Like like my daughter, i never forget. She used to come in. Erica used to come in my office. And she used to tell me, oh, Dad, when you did that, that was a long time ago. I said, what? This is what they do. That's, that's you know, them. people talking about, well, Eric, do you like... This is what they do. Let them be kids. People were criticizing y'all back in the day. Shh. They were criticizing y'all for being was. kids. Of course they was. What is all this shit around the neck? It looked like chains <laughs> from slavery. Right, right, right. Y'all don't know the chains y'all put on your neck. Y'all look like slaves and this and this and that. Oh, okay. I hear that. But right. these, these guys, what they do, man. This is what they do. Embrace right. them, man, and move on. Right. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Last question. Okay. From from someone that, that that's Eric B. the president. Yes. Who you who you putting your money on for president? Hey? Um, Hillary. 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 Hillary's going to run. If Hillary Hillary makes it, which we all looking forward to, Hillary is going to run. She's going to run Donald Trump right off the mm. off the off the bus. Is, it's is no, it crazy, man? Is it crazy that, that that Trump, like he has so much push behind him? I love it because Trump got in to divide the, the vote. Mm -hmm. That's the split the vote. And then he wind up getting momentum. Mm. He wind up saying silly stuff. And, and it goes to reality shows. Like, people love that silly stuff. Right. Nobody's talked about no issues. None. No issues. You're just, a clown. You yeah, just exactly. and, and you, you got a, You got small hands. You got <laughs> this. You, what? Is any, I'm going to put a wall up around and hit the Mexican. What? Yo. It's like, yo, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Right. But, but they're the eating it up, man. It's the times we it's live the times, in. Yes. But Hillary is going to run him right off the mm. board, man. Mm. And you know, and I'm, I was laughing. I was, I was on Twitter, and I was laughing today. And somebody wrote on Twitter because I, I put back a, a Thursday, my Thursday throwback picture, and a guy wrote. He said, "Eric B. and Jam Master J were the guy, the DJs that wore jewelry and had the most swag, you know, out of all DJs." Then somebody else wrote, um, "Eric B. doesn't get doesn't get the props that he deserved for taking hip hop to the next level." Mm. I was like, wow. "Wow!" I was like, "That's different." Right. You know, and and it's and it's true because I don't do interviews, I don't talk to people, cause it's like, yo, give me the money. I don't. This, I didn't get in here to be a star. Right. You know what I'm saying? Give me the money, I'm gone. I'm out the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's like you know, managing people. I don't get into the photos with them, and it's I'm behind. I'm standing behind the camera, right. man. Right. You know what I'm saying? This this is their business. Right. It's their time to shine. You know what I'm saying? I I don't I don't do that. I really. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel in my heart, man, I had a, had a great run. Mm -hmm. Had a great run with Eric B. and Rakim. And I'm, like, again, you know, I don't like to sound like a broken record, but I, I'm at peace with myself. I, I feel Very good. good. I feel good. I'm in a good space, Excellent, man. I don't man. let nobody, you know, 
mess up my day and hate on me. If you want to hate on me, man, okay. You keep, you keep that hate, man. <coughs> Yo, yeah. Eric, man, this has been phenomenal, man. And, and like I said, what, 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 what are we going to talk about next time, man? Let's what do, what are we talking about next time? You're going to go Because we talked it. about everything. No, we didn't. You're going to go over it. What, did, go what, over what, it. what did I miss? You're going to go over it. And you're going to be like, damn, I missed this. Yeah, I might, yeah, I might have to you're do gonna that. You're going to say, man. damn, I missed this. No, nah, man, I really appreciate this. And I, and I really appreciate it because you really don't do interviews, man. No. I try to stay away because you know what it is? It gets in the he said, she mm -hmm. said. It just gets to be so childish, right. man. You know what I'm saying? I don't gotta get up here and tell no lies and this and that. The the, the money talks. Mm -hmm. The rec the you know the records talk. They for themselves. You know what I'm saying? No publishing, no royalties. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I did this record. I did this record. So why does Eric B and Rakim get all the royalties mm -hmm. and the publishing? Mm -hmm. And you know, and again, you know, I just get so sick of just the negativity. Oh, Eric and Rakim don't get along. Why we don't get along? Every time I see Rakim, I seen him the other day in Newark, New Jersey. He did a show in Newark, New Jersey. And hey, man, what's happening? You, we hugged each other and we love. back. You know, love. we're right, back. Right. But it's it's just, I think that at some times, you know, we all have to grow up. Mm -hmm. We all have to grow up and be men and grandparents. You know what I'm saying? And show each other love, man. Stop with the, this negative he said, she said. Yo, man, that's the kind of stuff that messes up your dean, man. I don't got no time for it, man. Mm. I like I, I I can't say it enough. You know, I'm in a I'm in a great space. I'm in a great space in my life, man, and, and love life. When I wake up every day, man, I, I get up at three, four o'clock in the morning. Don't have to go to work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't have to go to work. But I turn around like e even in Newark, New Jersey, I volunteer, you know what I'm saying, to run the critical response unit. Really? Yeah, I volunteer to do it because I I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I have so much of a a great time. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, Eric, we're going to pay this. We're going to do this. We're going to do Man, I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. You do, you do. You don't, you don't. Right. But I'm in such a great space. Like, you know, meeting so many great people, man. Meeting you no know, governors and uh, politicians and, and reverends and pastors, imams, you know, and different people that I've met. Man, I, I feel good. I'm having a great run. I'm having a the great run. Run is still on. Yeah, run us along. every day I mm -hmm. get up, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and meet somebody like yourself. This is the first time I met you, yes, you know what I'm saying, listening to your podcast and different things that you do. When you meet different people that come into your life, you know what I'm saying, you're happy to meet them. You know, I'm, man, I'm not, I'm not a hateful guy. Hey, man, Jay, you call me up. Yo, E, I need to do an interview with somebody. Hold on, man, let me, let me call. That's my man. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do. You know what I'm saying? But some people get into this negative mode and like you like you have me and fox laugh about these old school rappers how they have this hateful yo man when we was doing it yo you squandered your opportunity mm -hmm. don't get mad at none of these young guys embrace what they do <clears throat> and move on you know what i'm saying i ain't got it you know i go out you know i go out to jersey you know what i'm saying i got uh rock band muhammad he's a deputy mayor he's my, my friend i love him and his wife I mean, we go different places and have, you know, he turns me on to different political stuff. You know, I see so many different people. Man, I have a great life. I'm having a great run. You know what I'm saying? Raz J. Baraka is the, mm. the mayor of yes. Newark, man. has made a lot of changes mm -hmm. and, and, and done a lot of great things for the city. I mean, we're having a great, great run as a family and as a team. Are we going to argue sometime and not get along? Well, that's, what brothers, right. that's what brothers do. Right. But at the end of the day, we stick together as a team to make things happen. Yes. And, we're ha and we're having a great time doing it. Is this new waters that everybody is into? Of course it is. So you don't know how to swim yet. You know what I'm saying? You still get acclimated to the water right. because, you know, nobody's been in this position before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're going we're gonna to figure it out and work together and make a change. That's what I tell people. You've got to get into politics. You've got to get into change. You can have all the money in the world. But at the end of the day... You, if you don't know who to pick, call it. You have garbage in front of your house. Have all the money in the world. Who are you going to call to pick it up? Mm. You going to call the 800 number and leave a message? Or are you going to call your local politician? Yo, man, I got a problem. Somebody keeps dumping in front of my house. What? Let me call sanitation. Mm. Let me call. They're on their way to get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you got it. I keep telling people now, don't sit there and complain about Trump. Don't complain about Hillary unless you're going to get out and do something. Right. Get out and vote. Right. Get out and vote. And you know, they said Puff said something, voting, do, voting does matter. Mm -hmm. Voting does matter. You gotta get out and vote. You can't continue to sit on the couch. Yo, yeah, man, the whole yo, man, I don't like, I don't like this mayor. I don't like this senator. Get out and do something, do something about, about it. Changing. 
Get out and do something about it. Get out and vote. Get out and get you a contingent of people and put them all together in a room. Hey, we're going to go out and start a movement. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing now. That's what it's about. All these different races, the governor's race, the, the uh, president's race. There's so many different people out there that, that are great mm -hmm. that you want to support.